In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Do we listen to God? You know, one of the most iconic characters in the New Testament is John the Baptist. Why is that? Well, John was a servant of God who listened and did what God wanted him to do. John was a person who trusted that what he was doing would be blessed by God because he was doing what God had asked him to do. John was considered the messenger sent to the people as he prepared the way for the coming Messiah who we all know as Jesus the Christ. Some say that John belonged to the Essene sect of Judaism. The Essenes expected a Messiah that would change everything. They practiced baptism as a ritual, preparing them for the Messiah. Because John and Jesus were cousins, it is also thought that Jesus had some connection to the Essenes as well. John was just an ordinary person who throughout his life had opened himself up to be engaged with the spiritual life of the people. John was a thinker who thought for himself and understood that he might just be putting himself in harm's way when he became a prophet speaking on behalf of God. We all know that the prophets did not get a lot of respect in their own time, primarily because they would challenge the people to change their ways. But that would not stop John. John knew what he was getting himself into. In fact, in John's time, the atmosphere of the people was one of anticipation. They were anticipating and perhaps were even hoping that someone would come along with a message and a word from God. And as always, it was the people that welcomed John's message. The hierarchy of the day, however, in both the temple and in the state, were the ones who felt threatened by what John was saying. John was the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Prepare the way of the Lord and make his paths straight. Was this proclamation an invitation or was it a threat? Well, I guess that depends on a person's particular perspective. If one were to think of themselves as a little broken and in need of healing, then it would be an invitation to be made whole, right? And if one were thinking that everything in their life was just perfect and they were comfortable and perhaps even a bit smug in their current status, well, then maybe they might feel a little threatened. The people of Jerusalem flocked to John where he was preaching in the region of the Jordan River, and they were eager to be baptized by John in that same river. They were looking for the fresh start that John was talking about. A person's baptism was considered the end result of a person's confession and repentance from their sin. And when the Pharisees and Sadducees came to investigate what John was doing, well, John had some pretty harsh words for them. You brood of vipers, John said, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come. Bear fruit worthy of repentance and do not presume to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these very stones to raise up children to Abraham. And of course, John was the messenger who prepared the way for the Messiah. John prepared the way for Jesus. One who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy even to carry his sandals. 
He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. John's prediction was that the Messiah's reputation would increase while his reputation would decrease. We see that play out when John criticizes King Herod for his lifestyle and is thrown into prison. As we all know, John is beheaded by Herod when he is seduced by the dancing of a young Solome, who, upon being promised anything up to half of his kingdom by Herod, asked for his head at the urging of her mother, Herodias. However, John did not go to his death without a word of hope. While he was in prison, John sent his disciples to ask Jesus if he was the one, the Messiah, or should they look for another? And Jesus responds, Will you go back and tell John what you have seen and heard? The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, and the dead are raised, and the poor have the good news preached to them. John went to his death knowing that he had done his job. Like you have heard me say before, the warrior Messiah that the people were expecting is not the Messiah that the people met in Jesus. Experience was the teacher for John the Baptist, the Essenes, the Zealots, and many others who wanted to overthrow the Roman government in Judea. And their hard lessons were persecution, poverty, and enslavement spiritually in their homeland, where Jerusalem was the city of God. They were not free even in their own land. Jesus, although experienced in the knowledge of what John knew, came as an innocent who would preach a new way of living in the kingdom of God. Spirituality would no longer be a place, but it would be a state of mind which would govern a person's actions. Succinctly put, Jesus would call on a believer to love God and to love your neighbor as yourself. And as Isaiah says in today's reading, a little child will lead them as a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and the spirit will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, and he will judge with equity the meek of the earth. Jesus will come with the innocence of a pure heart and as a seeker of justice with love. But Jesus will also teach with the experience of someone who gets his hands dirty, by loving where love is not expected, by healing the sick and the outcast because the healthy do not need a physician, by including the downtrodden and forgotten in his vision of the kingdom. Jesus will eventually give his own life for the sake of others, so that all may live eternally in the life-giving kingdom of God, where everyone will be at peace with one another. Well, let me conclude with the blessing of Paul, the apostle of Jesus, who continues preaching the message of the good news in Jesus. May the God of steadfast faith and encouragement Help us live in harmony with one another. And may the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen.